Before we do today's lesson, I want to go over something that we didn't get to yesterday. So you may or may have not have noticed that when you're finding the area of what? What is this figure? Is it special? What is it? Okay, so what we're talking about only works for equilateral triangles. If you're finding the area of an equilateral triangle, you don't have to, oh, I think Ms. Arnold went over this with you yesterday, but I'm going to do it again. You don't have to, every time, draw the altitude and put the 60 and the 30 there, and then divide, let's say this is 10, find across from 30 is 5, then across from 60 is 5 root 3, and then base times height divided by 2. The thing is that every time you're going to do that, it's going to be 60 degrees every time. The altitude's going to be half of the side root 3 every time. So if you wanted to memorize an additional formula that's like a shortcut, since equilateral triangles come up often enough, it might be worth your time to memorize this shortcut. So here's the formula, if you want, that you could use to find the area of an equilateral triangle. Side squared root 3 over 4. Side squared root 3 over 4. These triangles will come up in this unit, and it'll come up in the next unit, because we're doing 3D figures, and you'll have to find like the volume of a triangular prism. So first you have to find the area of the base and multiply it by the height. And if you can do this quick shortcut, you'll just have an edge on everyone else for that problem. So if the sides were really 10 like this, you would just do this. And the only thing you enter in your calculator would be this. You enter this in your calculator, and then you just attach the root 3 back on. So that would be what, 25 root 3. So it just skips some steps. You don't have to draw on your picture, and it works every time for every equilateral triangle. So if you want to memorize the side squared root 3 over 4, I memorize it. I use it all the time. It's really nice. Okay, let's get into today's lesson. That was for practice, but we're not going to. You don't need it. Title your notes, Trapezoid Rhombi Kites. You've probably already seen the formula for trapezoid before, but you may not have known how to find the area of a rhombus or a kite. So hopefully I get to teach you something a little bit new today. Okay, so we're going to dive right into the formula for a trapezoid. This is also on your formula chart, but instead of divide by 2, it has a coefficient of 1 half. Those are the same thing. I like to think of the trapezoid formula. It feels like it has a lot of pieces, but it really just looks like the formula for a triangle. Base times height divided by 2. Base times height divided by 2. But instead of base, it's the sum of the bases. I could show you where the formula came from, and I'll do that really quickly. But when I show students where it came from, they start to solve problems this way. This is not how to solve for the area. I just want to show you where it came from. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to clone my trapezoid. Now I have two of them. I'm going to need to remember in the end to undo that, okay? So I cloned my trapezoid. There's two of them now. I'm not changing the area when I rotate this. What figure do I have now? I have a parallelogram. The area of a parallelogram is base times height. Well, what should I call this base? I can call the height h. Check your h. But from here to here is base 2. What's this right here? Oh, I used it from up here. That's base 1. So the base of this parallelogram is the sum of those two. And then we do times the height. That's the area of the parallelogram. But I doubled my trapezoid, so I need to undo that. So I divide by 2. And that's where the formula comes from. That may or may not have made sense to you. If it didn't, just roll with it. Okay, let's try some trapezoid problems. Find the area and perimeter of the trapezoid. We, of course, need a height. We need a base 1 and a base 2 and a height. So anytime that your figure does not have an altitude drawn or does not have a height drawn, you know, we have one right here, but we don't really have enough information to find that. So we can draw in our own right here. Ooh, great news. 20 is across from the right angle. Woohoo! So we do not have to divide by radicals here. So 20 is our 2x. 10 would be our x. And what's across from 60? 
First one, good job. Ten, root three, cool. What goes here? Our twelve, yep. And what goes here? Because we need perimeter two. You can just slide that altitude over. This is going to show up on, on multiple quizzes throughout the unit, so this is really an important conversation to have. How do I find the perimeter of this figure? What am I allowed to add and what am I not allowed to combine? So to find the perimeter, first of all, you don't add in the altitude we drew. The perimeter needs to be of the original figure, just the purple. So I can add the 12, the 20, the 10, and the 12. You are allowed to combine all of those into one term. What is that term? It's 54. Okay. Since this is not a like term, it's part of the perimeter, but I cannot combine it. So my final perimeter is 54 plus 10 root 3. Repeat after me. I will not. I'll pretend you're repeating. I will not write 64 root 3 as my answer. I will not write 64 root 3 as my answer because then you're obeying a math law and you head to math jail. Illegal. Illegal activity. Don't do it. Okay. Area. Here we go. Let's use that formula. Base 1 plus, be careful here, what's base 2? Okay, Alex. Base 1 plus base 2 times, you don't really need to put this in parentheses, but I just did, times the height divided by 2. So what we can do is work with all of the integers and ignore the root 3 for now. So I've got 34 times 10 divided by 2. 34 times 10 divided by 2. We okay with that? 170. And then we multiply back in our root 3 at the end. This is not adding. This is multiplying, so it does work a little bit different. So 170 root 3 centimeters squared is the area. Base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. So see how working with radicals works differently when you're adding versus multiplying. Sorry. This one's kind of fun. Um, this one has a cool trick to it, so let's go over this one. Find the height of a trapezoid with, oh, that's different, with mid-segment 12 and an area of 84 inches squared. So I already know this is a work backwards problem. I was given the area. Now, if you remember from the quad unit, here's what a mid-segment looks like. What did we know about the mid-segment from the quadrilateral unit? Oh, you already did it. Good. The mid-segment was the average of the bases. The mid-segment from the quad unit was on your family tree. You memorized it. The mid-segment was the average of the bases. Do you see any similarities between the area formula and that mid-segment formula? Yes. Lots of similarities. Okay, let's write our area formula. There we go. That's our area formula. In purple, I'm going to substitute everything that we know. We know A. So instead of A, we substitute. That is 84. What else do we know? Ooh, literally, we know this whole thing. Look how that matches, matching twinsies. They match. So what can I put in that whole circle? What is the mid-segment? The mid-segment is 12. This whole thing is 12. And look how easy this is now. Wow. Cool. So that's like a little trick. Now you know the trick. And now you can use it in all your future problems. So the answer is 7 inches. The height is seven inches. Alrighty. Next shape is our good old rhombus. 
in the rhombus formula, we are not going to use its sides at all. We are going to use the length of its diagonals. This is also going to, I'm not going to show you where, I'm not going to derive it for you, but this formula looks just like the formula for a triangle, except I'm going to use different letters. Diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. Please note, that is multiplication. It's not like in trapezoid where it's base 1 plus base 2. There are no plus signs in this formula. It's kind of like base and height divided by 2. But instead, it's diagonal times diagonal divided by 2. The diagonals will not be congruent if it's, if it's not a square. If it's just a rhombus and not a square, the diagonals will be different lengths, so these numbers will be unique if it's not a square. Okay, let's try one of these. Find the area of the rhombus. So we need to remember some properties from our rhombus unit. But why would you ever use diagonal times diagonal divided by 2 for a square? You would just do side squared, right? But you could. You could use it. Okay, um, what did this hand motion mean, arm motion mean? Diagonals bisect each other, right? So if this is 6, we know this is 6. And then I gave you a gift. It's your Friday present. I built in a beautiful Pythagorean triple. You don't need to do much math. 6, 8, 10. That is a Pythagorean triple. We know diagonals bisect each other. So diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by by 2. Final answer, 96 feet squared. One more rhombus problem before we move on to kites. Find the area of the rhombus. So we have to know that in a rhombus the diagonals are perpendicular. That happens in rhombus, squares, and kites. So we need to remember that from the quad unit. We have 12 root 2, and that's across from 90. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is our 2x. The way to undo multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So when you take this and you divide by 2, the side across from 30 is 6 root 2. It's just half of 12 root 2. 6 root 2. And then the side across from 60, remember, that's our x root 3 side. So we take, this is our x, x root 3. You're allowed to multiply these. So the side across from 60 is 6 root 6. Those are not the diagonals. Those are just half of the diagonals. So be careful. Diagonal 1 times... Diagonal 2 divided by 2. What I do personally is I just do all the integers first, and I fully simplify them. 12 times 12 divided by 2. You got it? 72. So that's 72. Now I'll deal with my radicals. Square root 2 times square root 6 is square root 12, and unfortunately, sometimes you're done, but we're not done, because root 12 still has a perfect square in it. So, linger a little bit longer on this problem. Oh, we just divided by 2. Now we're going to have to multiply back by 2 again. A 2 escapes, so we have 144. 3 is left over. 144 root 3. They didn't give us units. So we don't have to give them units back. Don't worry about that. The great news about kites are, look at that, oh, same exact formula as rhombus. The bad news is there is no kite on your formula chart. Not there, doesn't exist. But since rhombus is on your formula chart, all you have to remember is that kite and rhombus are the same. You don't have to remember their formula, but you do need to remember that they have the same formula. And you can kind of remember that because in both of those shapes, the diagonals are perpendicular in a kite and a rhombus. So they share that property and they share their area formula. Diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. There is no plus sign. 
I repeat, there is no plus sign. Find the area and perimeter of the kite. I'm pretty sure I made all of these nice, beautiful triples. So let's do some Pythagorean theorem. 15 squared minus 12 squared. Square root that. We get 9. We know that it has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So we can get the perimeter taken care of right away. We know that one diagonal bisects the other. Do you see how many properties you're kind of having to pull back into play here? Just think of it, the kite folding over on the axis of symmetry. Think of it folding, and then all the numbers just land on each other. They just match. 15 lands on 15, 12 lands on 12, 20 lands on 20. Okay, 20 squared minus 12 squared. The square root of 256. Nice Pythagorean triples. So diagonal 1 is 24. It's like diagonal 2 is 25 divided by 2. Make sure you're multiplying. I don't know why I did area first. I'm getting 300 for the area. There are no units, so you don't are not required to put units. Okay, gosh. And what was that perimeter? Probably already typed it. 70. Nice. Any questions about kites? More of this was remembering kite properties than it was you being able to find area. You know what I mean? Let's do one more kite and then you're done. Find the area of the kite. You have to know to put in the right angle markings. You have to know that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. 10 is across from 90. So 5 is across from 30. I can go ahead and put it there because my Diagonal of symmetry, 5 root 3. Oh my goodness, what did they do to us? Pythagorean theorem. This one's pretty bad. I can't imagine this one showing up on a quiz, but we're going to do it anyways. So I'm doing 5 root 13 squared, and I'm just putting it into my calculator. Minus 5 squared. Oh my goodness, we get 300, and then we know that we need to square root it, 100 times 3, oh, perfect square, perfect square. So you can fat, fully factor treat if you want, but it's going to be 10 root 3. Okay, area, here we go, diagonal 1 times Oh, good. Look what they did. These are like terms. So I can add 5 root 3 and 10 root 3 to get 15 root 3 for diagonal 2. So diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. Not quite as bad as we thought. 75 root 3. No units again. Whew. So the great news is we can use calculators at all times, and the calculator did all of that for me. I didn't have to remember how to square that by hand.